Today we want to talk about hay testing. When to test, how to test, and how to interpret the results. So the first thing to determine is what hay should I sample and how should I go about doing that? We want to make sure that we sample different lots of hay and sample those separately. So a lot of hay is a particular cutting off of a specific field. The reason that we want to sample each lot of hay is so we can identify differences in plant maturity at, at various harvest times, uh, if we have differences in uh, the forages that make up the hay, we can account for those differences as well. And so if you are putting hay into barns such as the one behind me here, uh, where you may have hay coming from various uh, parts of uh, various fields at various times of the year, you want to somehow be able to identify what all those different piles mean and what they are. You can identify it with some of these little flags um, that are available at most farm supply places. You put one of those down in here so you can identify uh, information about how many bales of a particular lot of hay that is. And then you can match that up to the uh, hay analysis results that you get. And you can do this fairly, as you, again, as you're filling the barn. Uh, another option might be to take hay samples as you're feeding out of the barn. Now if you are sampling uh, hay that's just stored outside, uncovered, I would suggest waiting till about four to six weeks before you start to actually start to feed the hay before uh, taking the analysis at that time. Okay, now we will discuss how to take the sample. There are various types of hay sampling pieces of equipment. Most of them are a stainless steel type tube with some serrated teeth. The idea is that we want to cut a cross section of the bale and we want to have something that will cut through that bale so we get a representative sample of what's going on. If we reach in and try to pull a grab sample, uh, and make that representative of our hay. One of the things that can happen with that is as we're pulling that out we lose a lot of leaves and so our quality may not be representative uh, as well as taking a cross section of the bale. So in order to actually collect the sample uh, we separate the, uh, the net wrap or uh, if it's in the case of haylage, something that's wrapped, um, again, we want to make a little cut in the, um, in, the, in the plastic. And then we just simply push our coring unit into the bale. This will go in about 18 inches or so. They do make extensions, so you can go deeper into bales if you want to. And so, um, we will uh, then um, take, our, take our hay probe loose. Uh, we'll put it in the sample into some sort of a plastic container, a clean plastic container. This could be, a, again, a little plastic bucket like this, or you could put it directly into a freezer bag, something of that nature. The samplers will usually also have a uh, wooden dowel that you want to use to push the, the hay out of the tube. Uh, if the hay has a lot of moisture in it, sometimes it can stick in there uh, pretty hard and be difficult to get out. So uh, you'll have a, a little dowel. It's also important to keep your hand up on top of this little rubber uh, stopper here. Realize again that these are cutting edges and are kind of sharp. So if you're poking down here and then all of a sudden that sample gives way, uh, you can cut yourself a little bit. So not something you necessarily want to do. Many extension offices will uh, have these that you can use and borrow to sample hay from. So again, for each lot of hay, I want to sample about 10 to 12 bales, and that would be a subsample that we would then uh, combine and mix up and send off to the lab. So sampling under a tarp uh, is obviously similar than to uh, sampling out of a hay shed or anything else. The one thing that this particular operator has done, he's put a good bit of gravel here for water to escape uh, from the bales so we don't get a lot of waste on the other side. Again, in terms of uh, actually taking the, the hay sample itself, we want to make sure that we get into the, the side of the bale, get a cross section of the bale, and not take any of the wrapping 
uh, material that is used to uh, keep the bale in place. So again, once we have our sample collected, um, we'll put it into our plastic uh, container that's clean. Uh, we'll knock the sample down into there and proceed down to uh, select another bale uh, to go ahead and collect some samples from. Okay, so in terms of outside storage, this producer's done a good thing in terms of keeping his bales covered. He's put uh, a triangular piece together with three bales uh, and then covered them with the tarp. He's also set them on pallets, and I don't know if you'll be able to see that along here, but anything to break the ground uh, bale contact will prevent a lot of waste and uh, deterioration on the bottom of those bales. So again, the idea with all of this is to keep more value and more of the feeding value of the forage that you've put in the bale to make sure we get more of that feed value back out for our livestock. Some bales are harder to core than others and sometimes you'll hit a spot that's just very, very hard to get through. Um, I guess you go in as far as you can and, and then uh, pull out. That's why it's important to, uh, to sample a variety of bales so you get a good cross section of the hay that's in all of them. Okay, so we have collected our sample from uh, various bales of hay from a particular lot that a producer wants to send in. And so I've collected them here in my plastic bucket. I always like to have a little lid on the, uh, on the container that I transport in in case I do something silly like spill it. Uh, then I don't have to go back and do all my work again. So, so we have our, our sample here from about a, a 10 bales or so. Um, I want to mix those thoroughly uh, to make sure that we get a good representative sample of all the bales. And then I'm going to uh, prepare the sample to send to the lab. The particular lab we're going to be using for this uh, sample sends uh, prepaid mailers and then also this lab provides uh, plastic bags. Uh, you can also use the uh, Ziploc freezer bags. So I would suggest maybe buying um, uh, gallon size freezer bags and, uh, and filling those in about half full uh, if you're not using a mailer uh, system from a particular lab. And so we've got our sample mixed up. Uh, we just simply want to dump it into the bag and make sure that we get all of the sample in there. Again, fines and other things that might be at the bottom. Uh, would contain uh, the material that uh, from leaves or whatever that may be uh, shattered and would also contribute to some of the quality that we don't want to lose. And so um, as you kind of zoom into the, uh, into the bag here, I'll pull just a little bit out and if you can you know, kind of see my hands here, um, that gives you an idea of the length of cut on the uh, particular hay that we've got here. Uh, and we'll put that back in the bag. And then also, uh, as you look at the bag, uh, you can see that there will be collections of finds and things in them that, again, will contribute to the overall quality of the, of the uh, forage sample. And so then we just simply try to seal these up uh, as best we can. I like to squeeze out a bit of air. Uh, it's not all that critical, but I just kind of got in the habit of doing that. And so we seal it up then, and we have our sample ready to go. For dry hay, uh, you can take these and send them in about any time during the week. It's not so critical uh, with those. If you're sampling silage or haylage, uh, I'd recommend taking those samples in the early part of the week and so they get to the lab by Friday or so and they're not sitting over the weekend in the uh, post office or at the lab waiting for analysis. Okay, once we have our sample collected, then we need to determine which lab we want to send it off to and what tests we want to have run on our sample. 
ForageTesting.org is a website that has a listing of testing laboratories around the country. They, they will uh, again have links to their websites to the labs so you can get uh, price lists and the various kinds of test packages that are available at a, a particular lab. Some labs will also provide uh, prepaid mailers and packages for use to use uh, as well as some plastic bags that you can put your samples in. Uh, again you want to identify information about the sample, who it is, where it came from, information about the particular lot of hay that you are sampling. In terms of the actual test that you want to select for, there's a variety of information that you can, can use. Most of these labs will have packages of uh, analysis that they will give at a certain price. Uh, at a minimum, most labs will have a protein, moisture, and fiber test. Then as we want more information, more mineral information, or if we want specialized tests such as nitrates or those types of things, uh, there will be additional charges for those. The typical charges uh, range from $15 to $30 in that neighborhood depending again on the lab that you're using and the tests that you want to select to uh, have run on your sample. After we get the results back from the lab, again it will take approximately a week for most of these labs. Then it's time to determine what you do with that information. And that is the real strength of testing hay, and that's the reason we test it. And so if you're not used to interpreting uh, the results that you get, uh, please contact one of our, your extension uh, livestock specialists to help assist you with understanding that information, as well as to help you to develop feeding programs based on what those nutrient results are for your particular lots of hay.